council meeting. It's Tuesday, February 11th at 7.30 in the evening. It's not snowing and the water ain't rising. And, uh, and I'm still sore from shoveling, shoveling the snow off my front walk so everybody can walk by. Let the record show that everybody is here, happy, dry, warm. It's nice to see you folks out there tonight. Um, let's just move promptly forward. You have um, minutes from January 14 and January 28th. Um, everything okay? Is that a motion? No. I'll move to accept the minutes. Second. I have a motion second. All in favor, second, five, saying aye. Aye. I oppose most carries. Thank you very much. Um, visitor and public comment. We have uh, Tracy Weston. Come on up to the uh, microphone and uh, good evening and welcome to City Council. Thank you. I'm here to let you know that the Independence Hope County Women's Club turns 100 years old this month. And we're hosting an open house on March 1st at the Independence Women's Club located on 3rd Street right behind the Old Independence Library. We'll be having an open house from 4 to 7. And we'll be reviewing and having speakers speak on the history of the club and the Independence area starting at 5 o'clock. Great. And we'd like to invite anyone who's interested to come down and join us. And if anybody would like to participate, share some of the history of independence, they can contact um, me, Tracy Weston, at 503-917-9181. And I'll get you on the agenda. That's great. That's wonderful. Well, congratulations. What day of the week is that? On a Saturday. Saturday? Okay. That's wonderful. And I think the lady right behind you is probably very interested in that in that news story on 100 years in independence. That's not a hint. Uh, thank you very much, and I really appreciate uh, you coming and sharing that with thank us. Thank you. And congratulations on 100 years. Yes. It's a big deal. It is. Our clubhouse has done a lot. The main thing that I know about South Africa we did, the land that that library sits on That's was right. donated by the Women's Club. That's and right. And other important things in the community as well. Well, I'll be interested to hear <coughs> be hearing more. And thank you so much for taking the time to, to come in this evening. And happy birthday. Thank you, Tracy. Is there anybody else who has anything else to say under visitor comment at this point? If not, we're going to keep moving <laughs> forward. Uh, under mayor reports, uh, I have a, an appointment to the museum board, which you see on pages 13 and 14. Rebecca Berry and is recommended by the uh, by Robin and the museum board. And so I offer that to you. Well, I, I can endorse her highly. She was on the library board for is on the library board. She still is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a real good um, person to have. She has a lot of history here in Independence, and so I can vouch for her too. Great. Is that a motion? Yeah, I move. Yeah. Thank you. I, I take that as a motion. <laughs> second. And I have a second. Is there a discussion on this appointment? <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, under uh, mayor announcements, uh, I am uh, privileged to be able to, uh, tomorrow, to be able to uh, uh, give the State of the City address in front of the uh, Monmouth Independence Chamber of Commerce with uh, Mayor Oberst from Monmouth, and we'll be uh, doing that tomorrow at high noon <laughs> at, uh, at the Independence <coughs> Cinema, and uh, I really look forward to the opportunity to uh, um, to do that and I really want to take a moment and uh, thank some of the staff members who helped me with some details and a few wording. Well, um, some people don't realize that you know a lot of this gets written at the uh, before the crack of dawn and by the light of the moon and uh, I really did appreciate some of the help I got and so I want to just publicly thank uh, uh, thank all of you who helped I really did uh, do appreciate that. And uh, for those of you who can't make it, uh, Karen will help share a uh, copy with all the council members and uh, we'll get you a copy also. And under reports, uh, Mr. Klein, you have things for us today. I have a couple. Great. Mayor, members of council. Yeah, I've got a few 
Thanks, Mr. Bear with me. Uh, so, follow up from our last meeting, uh, Ken, Mr. Ken Harris was in here. He brought in a letter, he recommended a letter looking for some possible uh, consideration of some speed limit changes in various locations. We uh, was referred to the police department who forwarded on to ODOT for their review. ODOT came back with a, a letter essentially just to the, uh, say that they really did not agree with the, the request. They explained in detail what their position was. We're going to take that to our traffic safety committee and just uh, work through that a little further. And I think Mr. Harris has been invited to that meeting as well. So there'll be some closure on that process. We can report back if you'd like. That. Um, Independent Station, as you know, March is in on its way. Uh, we still have no lease on the report there other than that. So we're moving towards that date. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Go back. Stay close. Um, City Hall, the, the second payment to the down payment is due this Friday. We have a reason for this going to happen, and so we will. Proceeds with not month of closing on that property. So that's a $25,000 payment uh, that we have to put that way. Should have so, um, this I want to walk you through a little bit of what's going on with the hiring process on the news chief. Um, first round of interviews are scheduled for I mean, from Friday. Those are the telephone interviews where we had 23 candidates. We were down to 12 at this point. We want to narrow it to a smaller group for for uh, yeah, for on-site interviews. Uh, so that 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 is what that process is. That first round of interviews will we'll accomplish. Uh, we are looking at a process at this point beyond the, the first round of interviews. Sometime in the second or third week of March, we will, we will have a two-day process. The first day, and this is in consultation with the mayor. I think. We I think it would be a really good idea, was to do a kind of a, a community gathering in several locations. We, tentatively, we'd like to meet in, in, in at, at, at the church, at the old library, or the new library, excuse me, and at, at the Javier Park. And we think that give the community, you know, different parts of the community, an opportunity to interact, interact with the uh, uh, candidates. So those will be the formats we can take there. They'll just be one hour sessions at each location. I would ask that one or two counselors be at those locations to help one uh, keep the clock moving to, to give you an opportunity to meet, meet the candidates. Um, as well, ask any questions that you may have. We will have comment cards available at each location so that uh, the public and yourselves may leave, leave your thoughts behind. The next day will be the more intensive assessment and there will be a separate panel for that. And that will be made up of uh, several mostly law enforcement professionals, three from uh, police, the ranks of police we believe, one uh, district attorney and uh, civilian, and a consultant. I'll be there probably on an observational basis. Their, their, chart, their task will be to narrow down to the top two or three candidates over and over. So that's the process that's laid out in our head. And, and just so you're, there's been some confusion with this in the public, and you might want to make sure that you understand that the charter is what sets up essentially the, the hiring of the police chief by the city manager the councils and some communities that have to say that that's not what our charter uh, provides. Um, so it's just so you know that I think we have people asking those questions. Um, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. So that then we expect sometime within you know the first second third week of March to have those you know, that that more intensive interview process and come to some closure pretty quickly thereafter. So questions on that? And that was, a, that was a handful of information. I didn't hear that the first location uh, that these community. Catholic community church. Catholic church. Oh, Catholic Church. Okay, thank you. And you'll be sending us reminders. You know, dates. And that. You'll be sending us reminders about the dates and, and locations and yeah, I, I don't all the times and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, this was just an overview, but yeah, you'll have something you know, in writing that explains it. You know, something. I mean, the rest 
story thing, but it's not that I want to share and get a little bit more of a visually small hand or something like that. How it does. that that's the essential process. Okay. So it's, uh, it'll be a diligent process, and I mean, the candidates will have their job back. Um, uh, our second meeting of the tribe, the, the meeting here is coming kind of from Monday to the 4th. I think we've been notified of that for the source board. The executive or are we happy to have that For the tribal meeting? Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard back from them yet. So we're working, working to, to nail down the date, but I think it's going to be. Yeah, we think the 24th. So keep it, keep it pencil, maybe use a dark pencil, and don't use it yet. Oh. So it hasn't been confirmed? She thought it would work, but she had, she had to go talk to her council. She's going to do that yesterday. So we're looking to have the meeting around 11 o'clock in the morning, and we have a, we have a couple things. We have a sort of an outline of a format we'll do that morning. It won't be a working meeting for you to the point of time, so we can create that conversation. We'll talk some more about that. Uh, several of us had the pleasure of driving over to uh, Kaiser this morning to listen in on the at 7 a.m. to listen in on the uh, Marion Public Safety Council's presentation on their issues and concerns with uh, the, the existing state of affairs with the, the, the marijuana dispensary regulations are being issued in March. So we had that on today this morning. Um, it was interesting. Um, I don't really have much more than that to share with you at this point. Just let you know that, that being at the Super Council there. Thanks to there as well. Um, we are working on a couple of leases at this point. The River Union Market lease, and went back and forth on that document. We're working, and that's to get control of the park. And at this point, what we're looking at is the terrace property, like passing the uh, I'm sorry, the terrace at the park. Um, you know, that, we're, they're asking for an extended lease. I think we'll come back with this. <coughs> Uh, the optional years that would be terminated at the end of each option. Maybe a little more longevity than at least unless you object to that. It doesn't seem any reason not to. It's been successful. It's a real good one for the city. So we have more and more demands on that, more and more requests for use of the park. We we're, were looking at a couple of things this summer that you know might be kind of new and fun and exciting. And more and more we're looking at potential conflicting uses because everybody wants similar spaces. So we're sorting through that, but that's just you know, getting working with success is not a bad thing. So we'll, we'll work through all that. Uh, we're working with Verizon for lease of space on the tower, on the water tower. Uh, we, were, we have a pretty good uh, understanding of what the financial terms are, and we just have to get through all the side of the agreement they presented us and turn it into something that's that more balanced. <laughs> it's really a bad agreement I've ever seen. We'll get there. Uh, Mayor Hedge will say this is uh, Saturday. Mark your, if you have any on market calendar for in case you haven't already, it's the wind down. We mentioned that last time. The flow is to use an activist program. Who's putting that on? Their business program. Uh, should be a fun event 3 to 7 p.m. After that, we'll see Wild, wild Women Recite. It's part of the Wild Women uh, effort at the uh, Wild Women Show at the Mayor Gallery. And then there'll be a poetry. Uh, well, we pull it through this station. I don't know what that is, but it'll be a couple hours of that. Donna Henderson, who did music for us downstairs uh, in our, in our, our, on our little on our, uh, gallery we had down there a couple months ago. It was a little either way on that. Uh, nothing like a good story to get interest in our Facebook, which has cleared 900 uh, likes on our Facebook. It's amazing. A few pictures of that weather will do. Walt's as good as one of the people at Walmart shops. Jack, that was the best, but you know, <laughs> you know, more trouble on our lives means better, more attention to our Facebook. So we're working on that. See if we get it. Uh, we have, we're, we're moving ahead in our efforts to get the pool house replaced. It's a collaborative effort uh, with six different uh, nonprofits. Um, no pricing, so I've been down the money. Uh, we need a lot of we should help pay a lot of help, but we're crossing our fingers. It's not done deal yet. When it gets closer to done deal, we'll give you a lot more details. But it's a real nice collaboration with you know, Halo and Habitat Humanity and a few others. And so, good trip. We have a great project. We're looking for it. Uh, we continue to make 
progress on the river place apartments, the same thing with the process. Pretty close to done, as is the thing here, pretty close to done with doing the building permits. So there's still a couple of issues that are going back and forth between the building. But uh, by and large, I'm moving forward and uh, the round of possibly having a lot of will be here for the course very shortly. They're still anxious to get open in, in for the next, uh, next term for the college. So we're working with them kind of made that. The weather was a little bit of a So where are we going? Uh, our, we were making the final steps in our software conversion that goes live next Tuesday. Uh, Lori and her team are uh, at Utah at this point getting some training on this, on this uh, software. So that will be finishing up very shortly. Going live. As I reported last time, the, the most critical part of my life is the game or that was just fine. So it was very few chain, very few in place. And finally, work we just got a little bit earlier today. We were really excited to be uh, uh, doing development and done development again with the CDBG grant application for our, our wastewater reuse study, $150,000 for that. And, you know, so, uh, the work, so that is pretty good. Nice. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Great. Good report. Okay. Um, don't have any unfinished business. Let's move into the new business. We have a public hearing and a zone change uh, comprehensive plan map amendment. And I have official things I have to read here, and then we'll have a staff report, and then uh, comments from the audience, and we'll move forward from there. Uh, so the subject of the hearing, I'm opening a public hearing. The uh, hearing is, uh, uh, the subject is approval to amend the comprehensive plan designation from agriculture to low density residential, and change the zoning on map and tax lot number 8421DB00111 from agriculture AG to low density residential. The public hearing before the Independent City Council is now open for application ZC slash CPMA 012013, Willard uh, Leedy applicant. Do any counselors need to disclose any conflicts of interest, biases, ex parte contacts, or site visits? Do we have anything they need to disclose? Okay, no one had anything to disclose. Oregon land use law requires several items to be read into the record at the beginning of each and every public hearing. And I think staff get to do this <coughs> the next part. Who pray tell? <laughs> it's not very often you get to use the word pray tell. <laughs> Only for you, Mike. Is that in, in there, written here? Yeah, it would be in there, but it's before I come. Good. Um, the land use statement needs to be read at the record. Uh, the applicable substantive criteria upon which the case will be decided are found in the Independence Development Code, subchapter 12.025 and 12.030. These criteria are addressed in the staff report and will be read summarized by staff during the presentation of the staff report. Um, all testimony, arguments, and evidence presented must be directed towards these criteria or other criteria in the independence comprehensive plan or independence municipal code, which the speaker believes apply to the decision. That's the RS 197.763-5A. <coughs> Failure of anyone to raise an issue accompanied by <clears throat> statements or evidence sufficient to afford the council and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue would include appeal to the Oregon Land Use Board of Appeals, uh, LUPA, based on that issue, that's from RS 197.763-5C. An issue which may be the basis for an appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals shall be raised not later than the close of the record chat or following the final evidentiary hearing on the proposal before the city. Such issues shall be raised and accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the council and the parties an adequate opportunity to respond to each issue. ORS 
failure of the applicant, <coughs> failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to the proposed, proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow this council to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in the circuit court. So RS 197.796.3B. Um, not so much a good reading in there as well, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, and are you going to uh, offer the staff report? Uh, and thank you for reading that, I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. Um, yeah, I probably have to set up a little bit. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am here to uh, present the staff report for this land use application. Um, the application, as was mentioned by the mayor, the file number is ZC slash CPMA-01-2013. The applicant is Willard Levy, uh, 603 River Drive, Independence, Oregon. Um, he goes by the name Bill. I think you all are familiar with Bill Levy, uh, active member of the community. Um, he is also here and would likely speak after me in favor of his application. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, the applicant is requesting approval to amend our comprehensive plan designation from agricultural, which is HD, to low density residential, which is RS, and change the zoning from agricultural, HD, to low density residential, RS, or a very small amount of the property that he owns, approximately 0 0.62 acres of the total 6.07 acres. Now, I'm just going to take a break for a minute because the planning commission had a little bit of trouble understanding where Bill's property is, the subject property we're talking about. I created a little graphic for you uh, late this afternoon just to help a little bit because what, what Mr. Lee is really doing with here is uh, some overlapping uh, zoning designations, overlapping uh, properties, and there are some properties that he's proposed to vacate, and that stuff will be coming to you in the future. So what you have here is um, the property is directly north of the dog, dog park, so everyone knows where that is. And there's an orchard there. That entire piece uh, is the subject property. The two pieces that I colored in yellow are currently zoned agricultural. And he is proposing to rezone those two. One of them has his existing home on it. One of them uh, uh, has his own. He's proposing to change his own to RS on those two. And leave the majority of the property as ag because that does allow one single family home. So in essence, what he's proposing is, even though this looks like a large piece of property, it's mostly the floodplain. Um, and at most, what will come of this is the existing home will come under a, uh, a, a common uh, residential zone. And then he, two more building spaces will be allowed. So two new homes could be created with this zone change. Um, and I, I can answer questions regarding the location and some other things like that. Uh, so the request is to rezone approximately the 0.62 acres out of the total. Um, just a little bit back out of the property. It is, it's currently surrounded by single family uses or agricultural uses. Basically, it's not playing. It's now Dog Park, too. So, um, it's a pretty low intensity use. It's uh, Mr. Levy's intention that it be made that way along with the wishes of his neighbors. Um, I hope that you've all had a chance to look at the staff report. Um, I'm not willing to try to go through every uh, one of the goals and findings. Um, unless you have questions, so I can refer back and I can answer your questions, hopefully. Um, staff, has, <clears throat> staff has found that 
the application meets those goals um, and has made certain findings. Um, the Planning Commission reviewed this application on February 3rd. The application has been reviewed by uh, the city attorney as far as its findings. Um, the Planning Commission gave its recommendation to the city council that it approve the application. There is a sample motion in the back. Uh, and I am here to answer any questions if you have. Questions for uh, staff at this point? Anybody have any questions? Um, I just want a little more clarification on this. Is the orchard, does that go all the way up to up to here, up to the little yellow? Not quite that far, okay. but, yeah. but almost. So that so those plots are, are really just empty. They're not really they're not houses or anything. Those were old. That was an old layout. From, yeah. Okay. From, from probably a hundred years ago. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. That's right. So there are no houses there now. Okay. Right. Additional questions for staff at this point? Is the property between the two yellowed in squares is that buildable at all or not? Yes. And will that likely come back for its own change later on? I'm just curious no, why it's not. No, because agricultural that zone allows one single family home. Okay. And, and there's a home there right. currently. Okay. Yes. And the applicant uh, would prefer to leave it in agricultural. <clears throat> Any additional questions? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, Karen, any communications we receive that need to be entered into the record? None received. Okay. And uh, folks that have wished to speak, you, I hope you filled out a uh, speaker card uh, if you need to. There's so many out there. Okay. Anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the application, uh, this is your opportunity. Bill, if you'd like to say anything, you're welcome to step to the podium and say anything, but you don't have to. You're okay? Okay. Anybody opposed? I don't see anybody opposed. And uh, so with nobody speaking in favor or against, that means there's no rebuttal that needs to be rebutted. <laughs> so without objection, I'm going to close the public hearing. Is the council okay with that? Okay, we're closing the public hearing. Okay, we're now into discussion. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you have any questions? Do you, do you like the idea? Is it okay? What do you think? So there is an existing single family residence, right? Yeah. Here. Yes, there is. That would be on um, the is a, it, it's the little yellow square to the north, and it's tax lot one one one. Okay. Yeah. So that's lot number one then. That would be. Yeah. And lot number two would be. The rest of it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? It's an action item. Uh, oh. If if there, if, yes, it's on page twenty one. If you want to. Uh, okay, I don't, I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, move we adopt the findings. Is that? Right? Yep. Okay. In the staff report and approved comprehensive plan map amendment zone change 01-13 as recommended by staff and the planning commission. Second. I have a motion and a second. Everybody okay with all this? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I just want to compliment council for taking the time and reading all this material in advance. It does make the the uh, uh, the process go so smoothly. And I, I got to tell you, I've been around long enough to watch other cities where people haven't done their homework, and it it makes the light go the night go long. So well, thank you very much. I appreciate what Mr. Banco did with just yes. yeah. yeah, the color. Yeah, the, it, the coloring yeah. was helpful, Mike. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mike. Were, thank yeah. you. I'll just, I'll just add that the ordinance itself will be coming back to you for a, I think it's a double reading, Karen, on the 25th. Yeah, yeah we'll do it all then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, let's move on to... Uh, Page 31 through 35, Council Bill amending the Independence Municipal Code uh, on Boards, Committees, and Commissions. 
Who wants to talk about this one? Jeremy, are you feeling this one? If you would like me to. Sure, you know more about it. <laughs> Questions for staff? It's pretty straightforward. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Additional comment? Thank you, Karen. Okay. Karen, you do Kiel as well. Are you doing Kiel as well? <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, we need, we need to, we have to finish this one. We have to vote on this one. Um, so if there's no discussion, this is an action item. Sorry, I was, uh... Do you want to start it? Want to, somebody start it. I, I have a clarifying Please do. question. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Because there is a sentence in the staff report that talks about the, an addition of a requirement to formally appoint a treasurer. Is, is that something that is now put into the ordinance, or how is that handled? Yeah, we are, propo we are proposing to put that in the ordinance because these two event commissions, Hop Festival and Western Days, they actually ha handle cash, and it's cash of the city. And so we felt that actually appointing a treasurer as from, from their board, because they do that already, handle the cash and then turn it over to the city. They make budget requests. Felt it was important to have that as part of the ordinance. Thank you. Okay. Is that currently in the resolution? No, it is not. That's the one, that is the one addition. Right. Okay. Somebody start this, please. I move to read the proposed ordinance council bill 2014-02 in full as the text is contained in the council packet for the first time. I have a motion? Second. Second. Is there a discussion? All in favor signify say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. An ordinance amending IMC Chapter 2 Administration, Article 3, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, adding Division 11, City Festivals and Events Commissions, and stating an effective date. Okay. The next one. I move to read the proposed ordinance, Council Bill 2014-02, for the second time by title only. Second. Motion, second, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. Carries. An ordinance amending IMC Chapter 2, Administration, Article 3, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, adding Division 11, City Festivals and Events, Commissions, and stating an effective date. And I should note that there was a Scrivener's error on page 3 of the exhibit. Um, it refers to a paragraph B, and um, it should be paragraph 1A above. It's doesn't change the ordinance on page 35. Oh, thank you. Paragraph okay. B, it refers to paragraph B and it should be paragraph A above. Okay. okay. All right, you'll fix that when we get to it. Yep. Okay. Um, somebody hit the final one, please. I move to adopt the proposed ordinance council bill 2014 02. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Last call. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 And opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The ordinance will be assigned number 1526. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, the next one. David, you get to do this one, as I understand. Actually, this one's a. Uh, Take three and four from where I this one since she's going to be here. But we have made the three prior presentations on the EO program, the Healthy and Active Program. Uh, this is the resolution that comes with the program. Uh, that will really kind of kickstart our you know, formal involvement in it. Uh, 
we're looking to start the beginning as a eager city as opposed to fit or fabulous. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed that December. Just right here. <laughs> City manager talking, take two. <laughs> so well, all kidding aside, this is you know this is not you know this is you know good for the community, good for good for our staff, it's an incredible good also for the members who do try to get our staff on this healthy, you know, healthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Also looking to try and find some programs to do our our codes and like to promote, you know, quality, healthy money options in our community as well. So there's a lot of resources out there in this by going through this portal step, it opens the door to the training and staff resources that comes with it. This is a state program. Uh, Lincoln Cities has endorsed this program. They're partners in it. I think the other two cities in our county, or two of the three cities in our county, uh, if not three of the cities, but the cities are already on track as well. So I think it's just by and large a, you know, a great you know, It's a great program. I'm glad that we're doing it. This is step one. Questions for staff? Did you say that other cities in our county here? Yes. Mondo? Mondo, Dallas, I believe that's what you're Salem? All at various levels on, on, on the case the process. Are they eager or are they fabulous? I expect they're just eager. Mm -hmm. us, you know, I don't really think eager of any of them to be characterized as fabulous. Well, how can you get the paper? <laughs> <laughs> in the definite as the definitions provided by the program right. in the text under, provided under by the staff. Text. Yes, Tom. Yeah, have, have we seen some of the policies that would make us fit or fabulous, or what, what kind of things we have to adopt to uh, get into that designation? <laughs> so I think in the resolution you see some of that, that language that talks about those. You know, it's, it's a review of our land use and transportation policy. For instance, you know what kind of multimodal access we have. You know, what kind of walkability is we have our trail system? You know, how, how, you know, how well is that designated? How well is that shown? What are we do to make more, you know, new developments to, you know, create connectivity through the trail access? What are we doing with the parks, the like? You know, what are we doing to promote recreation? It's just a fit lifestyle. It's a part of the huge trail access. But it doesn't extend to things like it doesn't extend to things like you know limiting you know soft drink sizes or anything like that. No, we know what we're doing with the big golf. That's good. We're going to save our big golf. We'll go save our big golf. Oh. Are you going to go more than I do? Because I'm going to go between you. Yeah. Um, if I can add just a moment, I, I think uh, historically what these kind of resolutions actually do is it um, uh, says that we're interested in moving forward. It gives us a, ba a, a sound financial, a sound basis from which we can write grants to, to access additional question. resources mm -hmm. because we have the official piece of paper that says we'd like to move forward with mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And, th and this, this is just a recognition that we as the policy making body have said this is a worthy goal. We'd like to put our city, we want to promote health and fitness, and it's good for everybody, and it allows a, a grant uh, opportunity and they can reference that. Would that be a fair characterization? I think it's this, this, this program sort of came to me where we were made aware of this program at the last uh, the conference, and I sent them for the lengthy presentation of the, the EO program. I thought it was really, really, really exciting, frankly. I mean, there are some great resources out there. What, you know, what we're doing with farmers markets, for instance, that is, you know, that's, a, that's a big part of what, you know, what fits into the program. You know, where, where we're going trying to do establish a food hub in the area, that too, again, you know, becomes a big part of it. So I mean, these, these connections to local and healthy food choices, active lifestyles, you know, this weekend we were promoting skiing. That's <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> Any additional questions for staff? Well, I, I just want to comment on what Tom said. I kind of agree um, that that by involving ourselves in this program that we won't have to enact draconian regulations about 
size of drinks or whether or not you can do, I mean, this is, in order to become fabulous. Or, okay. Yeah. I, I think encouraging it and getting money for it and everything is fine, but I don't, I'm not interested in having. Okay. Not, not punitive. Not, okay. mandated. <laughs> not mandated stuff. Thank you. I would love to make a motion on this. <laughs> Thank you, please. <laughs> with, the, with the caveat that independence is already fabulous, whether so named through this program or not, I, I move agree. to approve resolution number 14 1374, a resolution setting forth the City of Independence's commitment to put healthy options within reach of all residents. I have a motion. Who would like to second? second. And a second by Jerry. Is there any discussion? <laughs> you know, I want to tell you, it's fun that we can ha that we can shuffle and have and have a good time when, when we're doing stuff. You know, I really appreciate that. You know, we're serious when we need to be serious, but we can have a good time at the same time. And we're we're having things that are a little bit more fun. So I want to comment on that. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> Is there any other business that we need to have uh, in front of the council? Any announcements? Anything that needs to be done? Yes. Please. Yeah. Go ahead. She can go. No, I just have an announcement. The Friends of the Independence Public Library is having a movie fundraiser uh, at our wonderful cinema on March the 10th at 7. And there'll be lots of door prizes, free popcorn, and all the money goes to our wonderful public library. So, so if what, you need a ticket. So what was that date again? March the 10th. March Monday, the 10th. Monday, March 10th at 7 p.m. I'm putting that in my calendar oh, because good. I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Yeah. There's always lots of popcorn. Do you accept details also will be the one face comes Oh, sure. Do we have the menu? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, what movie are we seeing this year? It's called Courageous. Oh. Oh. Is that, okay. Yeah. I have not seen it yet. Good. Okay. okay. But I'm, I've been told it's wonderful. Well, since you helped be yeah. involved with it, it must be. <laughs> in the Facebook link. Too. There you go. Any other announcements, Ms. I have one. Oh, yes, please, Diane. And then on March 15th, St. Oh. Patrick's St. is Patrick. having the uh, St. Patrick's dinner auction from 6 to 9. Good. That's a great event. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do get to say, I have been asked again to uh, to be the, uh, oh, the auctioneer for that. And I promise not to try to sell the priest. Uh, <laughs> They told me to sell everything. <laughs> um, other announcements? Yes. You, you sold part of the floor. You know that, because I bought some. Uh, see, I told you I'd sell everything. <laughs> yes, Marilyn. Well, first of all, for other events going on, on the 14th of March is the Community Awards Banquet through the Chamber of Commerce. And that will be at Eola Hills Wine Cellars starting at 5.30 p.m. Tickets can be reserved or purchased through the Chamber website, but more importantly, before we get to that point, there is a ballot out right now, also accessible through the Chamber website, because the community this year is deciding all of the winners. <coughs> so please get on the uh, internet and vote, and you can vote as many times as you have unique ISPs. Okay. And. Um, I just wanted to also thank the the city and its um, and I'm stepping out for a second with my my net hat right on right now to thank them for um, being supportive through the letter that was in the water bill at the end of the month. We had uh, some very poor business practices going on in town, and the city addressed them head on. And since that has happened, we have had a number of customers call MyNet and just thank us for, for alerting them to the situation and it helped them to understand why they had been almost accosted at their door by um, salesmen who are now no longer in the area. So thank you to Good. the city. Good. Great. Additional comments? Mm -hmm. If not, somebody send us home. I move to adjourn. All in favor signify saying aye. Aye. And opposed, motion carries. Thank you.